find out how I cyberpunk this scene using After Effects' newest features and of course, generative fill. Let's dive into it. So I have my clip here of two people in a downtown area walking up a, looks like a subway station. So I'm just gonna grab a screen grab, probably of right when they get to the top step. And I'm gonna go to composition, save frame as, file. Okay, so now in Photoshop, I'm actually just gonna export this as a JPEG. So here I am in Firefly. I have my image uploaded as the structure reference, bring the strength all the way up. And I just use the cyberpunk tag there. And I'm gonna type in my prompt here, pretty detailed prompt. If you're enjoying my videos on YouTube, then check me out on Patreon, where I have some exclusive stuff for you guys, like Patreon exclusive tutorials, priority chat, downloadable templates, and even a shout out on these YouTube videos. So don't wait, check it out today, link is below. Love to see you there. Hit generate. And you can see right away, it uses the same exact structure as my video. And I have to say, these look really good. I'm super excited about this. So, see, I'm gonna pick this one. So I'm gonna download this. So I'm gonna take that JPEG that I downloaded off Firefly and I'm gonna bring that into Zoe Depth. So I'm gonna go to Zoe Depth. And if I go over to image to 3D, I'm gonna upload my image here. I'm gonna check keep occlusion edges, just so it all it's all one piece. And I'm gonna hit submit. And you can see it comes out with a realistic 3D mesh of this scene. I mean, obviously you have to get the right angle, otherwise some of it looks a little sloppy, but it just creates that little bit of parallax that you need to make a scene blend in more realistically. So I'm gonna download that, that's gonna download as a GLB file, and then I'm gonna go back to After Effects and I'm gonna import that GLB file. I'm gonna bring that into my comp, and then this model settings box is gonna pop up. So if I scale it up, just where it's gonna be. Under advanced, if I click flip Z axis, cause for some reason the Zoe depth always has to have you flip the Z axis. And you can see the colors are more realistic. So it basically flips it around. So from there, I'm gonna scale it up, try to get stuff in the right spot. You could see, and you can see it's actually flipped again. So from here, I actually have to go to transform, flip horizontal, and this is where my scene actually is. Um, the right perspective. For some reason, Zoe Depth requires this. Other GLB files you don't, but for some reason, Zoe Depth does. Small price to pay for having such a good result. So I'm gonna scale this up. I'm gonna try to get this as close as I can to my scene. That looks really good. Since my layer is a 3D layer, I'm just gonna leave that for now. I'll bring the opacity back up. I'm gonna hide this layer for now. And then under my bottom layer, I'm gonna right click and go to track and stabilize track camera. And this is gonna enable the 3D camera tracker. So once that initializes and analyzes, I'll speed this up for you. So once our 3D camera tracker is complete, you'll see a bunch of camera tracks here. It looks great. But since my GLB file is already a 3D layer and it's already there, I'm just gonna enable it. And you see, since the 3D tracker camera is enabled, the movement's already there. So my work is done in terms of my camera movement. I'm gonna take my video layer, I'm gonna bring it to the top, and I'm actually just gonna create a rough mask around where my subjects are. Okay, that looks pretty good. If I hit the F key, I could feather it, so I'm actually gonna feather. So that looks good, later on I'm gonna color correct this and match it up a little bit more, but for now, what we need to do is we need to fix some of these spots that look a little funky. I'm gonna bring my original JPEG, overlay this in my scene. I'm gonna make this a 3D object. I'm gonna scale it up, tweak the opacity, and I'm gonna try to line this up as best I can using the scale and the position parameters. Okay, once I have that lined up, I'm actually going to create a mask on some of the spots that actually look a little bit funky. So let me just hide my JPEG layer real quick. So I'm gonna actually create a mask on part of this structure here. 
and I'm going to feather both of these masks. And since I made this a 3D layer already, this has the motion built into it already. So now from here, you can see I have a little bit of my alpha channel poking out of my corners here. So I'm going to fix the corners by just importing a foreground element. And I'm just going to move it into the foreground here in Z space. So I'm actually going to bring in a 3D object that has animation built into it. This is one of the new features in After Effects. So I'm going to go to Sketchfab. I'm going to drop this link below. This is a really cool 3D bus. It looks like a flying bus. So I'm going to download this as a GLB file. I'm going to bring this GLB into After Effects and I'm going to bring it into my comp. And the model settings box pops up again. I could scale that down. For this one, I don't have to flip the Z axis or anything like that because this is from a different website. I could tweak the orientation, the scale and position parameters. So if I isolate this, you could see if your computer is running slow. You can click on the draft 3D and this will speed up the 3D object rendering. If you drop down the GLB and you could see animation options. And from here, I can click animation and you can see the bus kind of has an animation go between the, you know, the little bit of the bobble and the wheels or jet engines, it looks like. So from here, I could actually just enable time remapping. And then I could actually just keyframe these times and I could have this animation loop. So once I tweak the time remapping and give it a little bit of a movement throughout the scene, this is kind of what it's going to look like. So what I did was I actually pre-rendered it as an alpha channel because it speeds up my computer a lot. The GLBs really slow down my machine. I have my GLB file that I pre-rendered out in the foreground here. You could see from here, I added a Lumetri color effect to my video layer. You could see the before and after of using the Lumetri color effect. I just added more vibrance to it. I, I boosted up some of the colors to make it match the cyberpunk scene. And then I added a colorized glow to it. The BCC colorized glow kind of adds a more of a glow to match the atmosphere of the scene. Once I have my video layer color corrected and blended, now I can add my lighting to the scene. So if you wanted to add lighting, I can click on new light and I'm actually going to create an environment light. And I'm going to hit OK. So what I'm going to do is under source, you could actually change this to an HDR image. So I'm going to grab an HDR off of HDRI Haven. Check out that link below. So under HDR Haven, I'm going to download something similar, which is like a street light city kind of scene. I have that downloaded as an HDR and I'm actually going to bring that into my comp and I'm going to hide it. So here it is in my comp. I have it hidden and under environment light, I'm just going to change my source to that HDR light. And you can see the scene changes. It gets pretty dramatic and it gets pretty dark, which changes the, the composite of the scene. So I'm actually going to increase the intensity to make it blend in a little bit more. And this is going to be a lot of back and forth of trying to make this blend, but I'm just showing you the, the basic uh, tools that you need. I could actually change the rotation of the light based on what the image looks like. So that looks pretty good. So once I have that set, I could actually pre-comp my whole composition. I'm going to bring that into a new comp. And now I can play around with a new feature, which is a 3D channel extract. Under the effects and presets, there's a new dropdown that's called 3D channel. So I'm going to bring 3D channel extract onto my scene. And what it's going to do is it's going to extract everything that's in the pre-comp that's a 3D layer. And I can see once I change the black point, you can see it brings in the 3D elements. If it's a black color, it's going to be further away. If it's a white color, it's going to be closer to the camera. What you can do is you can create these realistic depth maps and you can create a camera lens blur, fog, different kind of effects that rely on that depth map and really make your scene stand out. So again, if you like my tutorials, check out my Patreon page. Here's my final result.